So um, I had a colleague at the Air Force Academy who told me that he used the same policy um, and, uh, and thought it was a pretty effective deterrent. And so I just took his idea um, and uh, in fact let him know about this. He had already seen the viral video. His name's Jeff Smith. And, and I decided to incorporate it in my classes as well. And it seems to be a pretty effective deterrent because I've actually, that I recall, never had anybody until this time answered on speakerphone. Most of the time students will reach down. They'll shut it off really quickly if it rings at all. And of course uh, it's over. <laughs> sure. So cell phones weren't really an issue in your class? Typically, um, no. Just something that you picked up. Okay. If it's ever an issue, it's, it's probably texting much more than okay. any kind of ringing. So. Okay. So um, let's, let's, let's walk through the story here. Sure. Taylor's phone goes off. Yep. So the phone goes off, and actually, I didn't recognize it quite. It was just a funny ring, and, and students said, oh, oh, that's a phone. That's yours, Taylor. And they kind of, uh, you know, prompted her to answer it, and I sort of acknowledged, yes, yes, that's the policy. And she answered it, and then boom, the speaker on the phone used the word pregnancy center. When I heard that, the first thing I thought was, did I hear what I th think I heard? And that's when I said to her, uh, you know, um, I think you might want to shut that down. But by that time, it was too late. Right. Uh, the cat was out of the bag. And, uh, and then I just kept thinking, why is she not shutting it off? Why is it, why is it oh, okay, I'm going to have to apologize. You know, so it was, it was just very, very quick. So once the phone call ends, what is running through your mind at that point? Well, the only thing is I just felt terribly bad for Taylor. I was like, I can't believe any, any woman that finds out she's pregnant, it should be in a private moment because it's such a significant moment and never publicly unless that's what she wants. And so I just said, oh my, I feel mortified for her. I'm just so sorry. And so it was natural just to say, I'm so sorry. I apologize for, for that. And it was April 1st, I'm assuming, when the it, video yes, was yes, taken. And that's right. April Fool's didn't even cross your mind. You know, the funny thing is, it didn't. And uh, the irony is that I actually pulled what, in retrospect, was a very wimpy April Fool's joke myself on them by having them clear their desk at the B of class and pretending like I was giving them a pop quiz. And in fact, the students told me they thought because I did something to them that it would be on my mind and, uh, and that I, the, the, the joke wouldn't play out because I would catch it. But I just didn't. And the material was perfect for, mm -hmm. for me not catching it. Had it been something more dramatic like, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, you, your whole family was in a big car wreck and you know, then I would be like, well, that's pretty odd. So um, I probably would have caught it, but this was just the right topic. So, so. it seemed pretty realistic. It, it seemed very real and she acted it so well that I just didn't, didn't detect any kind of uh, potential for a joke. <laughs> so as the joke progressed, mm -hmm. April, first name, middle name, Fools. Now in the video, it took about two, three seconds for you to kind of, for it to kind of click. It, it, it what took, was running through your mind? It took a moment of processing. And then I can't remember whether or not somebody triggered a laugh that then made me laugh in return. But I think that it was a combination of, wow, and then relief and then laughter. So um, it was actually quite a relief at the moment because I thought, okay, she's not humiliated. This is a great joke, laughs on me. <laughs> that's, that's great. So then, you know, once we finally figured out this was, you know, all an April Fool's joke, the class erupted in laughter, about two to three minutes, mm -hmm. and then afterwards you realized it was all recorded. Yes. How did I, you feel about that? You know, I thought that was really cute too, and, and I had not realized, of course, until the recording how involved and planned this was. And, uh, you know, there was only, I think, a half a dozen students that were involved. So the other thing that made the joke very effective is the vast majority of the students in the classroom were also mortified by what was going on and then laughed also when they saw because uh, it was just so well played out. So, um, so yes, you know, I, I, I wasn't bothered by the fact that they recorded. I thought it was actually a great memory and that they could send it to me so I could, you know, have that memory recorded for my sake as well. Yeah. So, so now, as I checked as of this morning, 14 and a half million views. Yeah, that's actually quite stunning. You know, when I, uh, I, I think I'd overheard a student say, oh, this will be great on YouTube. So later on, I contacted the PR folks here to quite say, you know, I think a student might upload something onto the internet, this prank. And then I asked them, would you just send it to me and let me look at it first? And they did, of course. And, uh, and at first, because I'm a pretty private person, I said, why don't we just keep it to ourselves? You can show it to your friends on laptop to laptop, but let's not put it up yet. Um, and then later the week, I kind of reflected on it and said, you know, to be really complete, and their creativity was so good, um, I had to just give them the thumbs up. And so I gave them the thumbs up, and uh, lo and behold, we, I, none of us anticipated that it would go viral like this. So, What about the video do you think made it go viral? You know, I, I think the length is just about perfect, about two minutes, and the sequence of how things developed was just about perfect, too. It wasn't too, too long of discomfort 
to make people really squirm and think, oh, this is terrible. Um, the timing was great when the conversation was over and then a uh, Taylor's revelation of April Fools was perfect and the laughter that ensued. I, I think really it's just the material and the timing that made it go viral. <laughs> So what kind of um, reaction, what kind of response have you got from your coworkers, students, um, family members? Well, coworkers uh, have you know, congratulated me and said, that's great, this is, this is wonderful, I thought it was hilarious. Um, family members the same way. In fact, I had sent it uh, to my wife, I uploaded it, showed it to my wife and some, some relatives to just see what they thought, and they thought it'd be fine to put it up on the internet. Um, so, and in fact, I've gotten emails from people all across the country. I've gotten emails from former uh, military colleagues when I was in the Air Force. Um, in fact, a person from high school, I haven't contacted high school friends in years. Um, so it's actually pretty amazing how broad the feedback has been to my college email address. Yeah. So. And you mentioned you served in the military. I did. Mm -hmm. where, um, where did you serve? Um, I served all over the country. I went to Afghanistan and was deployed there. So I served 21 years and, and retired oh, last wow. year. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for your service. Oh, thank you. Thank too. you. I, I did not know that. Yes. Excellent. And um, are you from Michigan or? You know, ironically, I was born in Michigan, but okay. I never really returned to the state beyond visiting until moving here for the job at Aquinas. Okay, and then so. you were in the art. You were part of the army, the Air Marines, Force. the yep. Air Force. Okay, yeah, excellent, excellent. So you're still getting emails, still getting um, yes, um, we're trickling in today. Of course, Facebook. I'm getting feedback through Facebook, and uh, so it's pretty funny. How has class been since? Well, you know, yesterday I was pretty exhausted, so I, I was on two hours of sleep. So I told the students, you know, in light of what's happened, I'm probably not going to be able to grind through much of a lecture. I, I gave about a half a lecture, and then we just kind of relish the moment of what had happened. So. Are, are we still living in the moment in class? I think so. I have the, that very class I have later this morning. Oh. And, uh, so that, that should be an interesting and fun time. What, what time is it this morning? That is uh, 10.50 to 1140. Do you mind if I stop by and talk oh, to no, that's a fine. couple students? Sure. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Um, let's see. I, I believe that's all okay. I have for you. Terrific. Congratulations Thanks on so much. Uh, this, uh, um, you know, what was a just a normal cell phone going off in class to suddenly the entire country <laughs> captivated. I did want to ask you though, oh, sure. how, um, wh what do you think this, how do you think this affects a day-to-day -day classroom environment? Do you think it's healthy for a group of students in your class to engage in such activity, I guess? Well, you know, I think uh, context is everything. It depends on the rapport with the students and the professor. You know, some classrooms probably, um, the atmosphere isn't conducive to the kind of prank. In fact, that might be deter students from trying it in other classes. And these days, social media, media, it's a big wild card. I mean, in some respects, it's a, it's a great thing. In other respects, there are downsides. So I think every situation has to be assessed in itself, so. Do you think you'll ever live it down? Um, I, my only concern is that uh, new students will have their expectations too high about what my class is going to be like, and we still have to grind through the economics material, so I don't <laughs> want to disappoint them. So Excellent.